Have you ever wondered about the story of Helen Ray Fowler, the only black woman to be executed in New York during the 20th century? This is her tale, one of struggle, resilience, and ultimately, tragedy. Helen was a mother of five children, diligently juggling her responsibilities as a parent and as the owner of a boarding house in the quiet village of Niagara Falls. Life was challenging, but Helen was no stranger to hard work. Standing at five feet seven inches tall and weighing 227 pounds, she was a formidable presence. During the summer of 1943, she opened her home to a man named George Knight. A habitual drinker with a violent streak, Knight was no stranger to the local police. Little did Helen know her decision to take him in would set the stage for a chain of events that would forever mark her place in history. As fate would have it, Helen's life took a dark turn on the night of October 30th, 1943. A seemingly regular night transformed into a nightmare when Helen walked into a local tavern. The air was thick with tension as Helen's eyes met those of her boarder, George Knight, who was drinking with another woman. A verbal exchange soon escalated into a physical brawl and the tavern's tranquil atmosphere was shattered as the fight spilled onto the streets. As the crowd watched the spectacle unfold, George William Fowler, a gas station owner from nearby Ransomville, observed from a distance. He was a white man in his 60s and despite sharing a surname, he bore no relation to Helen. Intrigued by the ongoing chaos, he decided to follow Helen as she made her way home. Upon arriving at her residence on Memorial Parkway, Helen was joined by George William Fowler. His intentions were unclear, perhaps romantic, or maybe fueled by the night's adrenaline. Either way, another fight ensued, turning the house into a battlefield. The confrontation ended with Fowler on the floor, his life slipping away. Meanwhile, George Knight had followed them home. In a fit of rage or perhaps fear, he grabbed a large vase and dealt a fatal blow to Fowler's head. The once lively gas station owner was now a lifeless body on Helen's living room floor. Realizing the gravity of their actions, Helen and Knight knew they had to hide the evidence. They stuffed Fowler's body into a trunk, a grim coffin for the unfortunate man. In the cover of night, they drove to the North Grand Island Bridge, overlooking the upper Niagara River. With Canada's lights twinkling in the distance, they heaved the trunk into the river, hoping it would be carried far away. In a desperate attempt to hide their crime, Helen and Knight dumped the body in the Niagara River. But as we all know, the truth has a way of surfacing. The discovery of the body sent shockwaves through the residents of Ransomville, leading to a swift investigation. The local law enforcement wasted no time in apprehending the suspects, Helen Ray Fowler and George Knight. The damning evidence and their own confessions during the interrogation left no room for doubt. The duo had indeed committed the heinous crime. Their trial commenced on a cold February week in 1944 in the Niagara County Court in Lockport. The case was a spectacle, the first murder trial in the county since 1938. The jury, a group of ordinary citizens, found themselves confronted with the complexities of the law and the harsh realities of the crime. The question that perplexed the jury was whether a person who didn't actually kill could be found guilty of murder. The judge, William Munson, clarified this legal nuance. He explained that under the penal law of the state of New York, two persons could indeed be found guilty of the same murder, even if only one of them had committed the offense. This was known as felony murder. During the five-day trial, no defense witnesses were called to the stand. The confessions of the accused, coupled with the weight of the evidence, led to a swift conclusion. Both Helen and Knight were found guilty of first-degree murder. The courtroom held its breath as the verdict was read out. Helen, who had cried throughout the trial, burst into hysterics, while Knight remained passive as he had been throughout the proceedings. The sentence was as severe as the crime they had committed. Both were condemned to death, marking a tragic end to their lives. And so, Helen Ray Fowler went down in history as the only black woman to be executed in New York in the 20th century, a tragic end to a life that was already filled with challenges.